Hello, this is Cheryl Rose at the Tipton County Museum. And today, as a part of our Tipton County Museum Online Academy, we are going to talk to you about butterflies of West Tennessee, or flying jewels as some people call them. We're not going to cover every butterfly of West Tennessee, but we're going to cover some of the more common ones that you will see. Now this uh, slide shows a favorite quote of mine. Just when the caterpillar thought the world was over, it became a butterfly. Now we're going to cover metamorphosis uh, in a few minutes, and then you'll understand the meaning of this quote. Now in West Tennessee, we have some rather large butterflies. I call them the big three, because they're three uh, different species of butterflies that are fairly large. The first one is the tiger swallowtail, of course called tiger swallowtail because it is yellow and black striped. You'll see them a whole lot uh, around here. They're very, very common. And they're called swallowtails because on the bottom of their hind wing, you see this elongated um, end of their wing. And so that's why they're called a swallowtail. And swallowtails love flowers. This one right here is uh, getting some nectar from a phlox plant. Here's another view. This is an old-fashioned flower, an old-fashioned garden phlox and the butterflies really, really love it because butterflies get nectar or a sugar water from the blossoms. So that's why they're attracted to flowers. Here's another picture of um, the swallowtail. You can get a look at their what the bottom of their wings look like on an old-fashioned tiger lily. They really, really like those. And they also help pollinate the flowers when they're visiting the flowers. The next of the big three, number two, is the black swallowtail butterfly, or as they used to be called, uh, eastern black swallowtail butterfly. It's a beautiful black butterfly with iridescent red, orange, and yellow, and they again love the old-fashioned flocks. I know to some people this looks like a worm, but this is actually a caterpillar. It is an eastern black swallowtail caterpillar and it is on a parsley plant. Parsley is an herb, and this is their food. The mother swallowtail lays her eggs on the parsley, they hatch, and they start eating the parsley plant. A lot of people think, like I said, think they're worms and they will squash them, but you don't wanna do that because if you squash them, then they can't become this beautiful butterfly. So if you hear somebody talking about they have parsley worms, you need to tell them not to squash them because they're gonna become a beautiful black butterfly. And again, you can see the swallowtail on the hind wing and you can see the iridescent, the really shiny blue uh, on the bottom of their wings. And this is the time of the year that you start seeing a lot of butterflies. Next, number three of the big three is a butterfly that's very near and dear to my heart. It is the monarch butterfly, which is the big black and orange butterfly that you used to see a lot, but unfortunately now, due to loss of places to live and loss of food sources, we don't see them nearly as much. So we urge everyone to plant milkweed plants because that is the food that the baby caterpillars that will become monarch butterflies eat. This, by the way, is a male monarch. You can tell that because on his hind wings, there are two oval black spots. And that's how you tell the difference between a boy monarch and a girl monarch. You can see now uh, in this photo, the bottom side of the wings. And you see how dull that is? You don't see that orange and black? It's more of kind of a pale yellow. And look at all the spots and all the polka dots on the butterfly's body. Now here's one on a uh, butterfly bush. And you'll see a lot of uh, people grow butterfly bushes for the butterflies. This is the caterpillar of a monarch butterfly. You will see them on types of milkweeds. Milkweeds is what we call 
a host plant. Now, the, it's called a host plant because that is what the eggs are laid on by the mother monarch, and when they hatch, that is what the caterpillars eat. And they eat that, they eat and eat and eat and eat and eat, and they then, when they get a, a certain size, they will shed their skin or molt, and they will uh, shed that skin because they're growing. And that skin splits and they crawl out of it, and they will eat and eat and eat again, and they will do this about four times before they become a chrysalis. And that is a monarch chrysalis. It's kind of a uh, pale green, and it has little gold flecks on it at the top and the bottom. And you can see in this uh, that uh, you can actually see the butterfly on the inside of it. And this is just a couple of days before the butterfly hatches from its chrysalis. Now this is, I mentioned um, metamorphosis when we first started, and this is showing the, the cycles or the steps in uh, a caterpillar becoming a butterfly, and that is called metamorphosis. It starts out with the egg, the egg hatches, and it starts, the, the caterpillar starts eating, and as I said, it eats and eats and eats. Um, if you've ever read the book, The Very Hungry Caterpillar, you'll understand about how they eat and eat and eat. But as I said, they'll shed their skin about four times and then they will form a chrysalis. And this is the chrysalis. And they stay in that chrysalis for about two weeks. And then they'll hatch out and then you have a butterfly. Now when they hatch out, you, um, you will see them, they look kind of crumpled. Their wings will be all crumpled and their body will still be kind of uh, the big and fat looking. But what they do is they will hang onto a branch or a leaf and they will start pumping the fluid out of their body into their wings and that gets into the veins in their wings and it makes their wings straighten out. If you ever see a butterfly with crumpled wings, more than likely it has just hatched out and it is trying to let its wings dry so that it can fly because if, they're, if its wings are not dry, it can't fly. A few years ago, I had the privilege of raising a monarch. Uh, some friends gave me uh, a milkweed that had some eggs on it and the eggs hatched out and I got to watch the whole metamorphosis process. Well, this was the day that I came home from work and the monarch had hatched out, or uh, as scientists call it, eclose, and it was in the cage and it was its wings were drying out. And so, whenever its wings had dried out completely, that's what it looked like. And I took it out in the backyard in one of my butterfly gardens and released it, and it flew away. Now something I'd like to tell you about monarchs, we noticed the orange and black coloration. That is a warning to birds and other things that would eat it that I taste bad or I'm poisoned. And what happens is when the caterpillar eats the milkweed, it has a poison in it that makes the caterpillar taste bad, and it also makes the butterfly taste bad. Yeah. So that is a warning to birds that would eat it that's saying, no, you don't want me, I'll make you sick. And there's another black and orange butterfly that mimics or copies the monarch, and that is a viceroy butterfly. It has, has the same coloration, but it's a little bit smaller, and its um, hind wings are, are just a little bit different. But if you ever hear someone talk about mimicry, that is when something copies something else. Now, those were the big three in West Tennessee, butterflies, but there are lots of other butterflies, uh, very small ones in fact, some tiny little lavender and blue butterflies. This one is a pearl crescent and it's a small black and orange butterfly and it is actually on the apple mint in our pollinator and herb gardens out in the back of the museum. When the apple mint blooms, the butterflies are attracted to the sweet scent of the blossoms and they get the nectar from that. This is a fritillary butterfly. It's a little bit bigger than the pearl crescent 
and they love any kind of flowers. They're mostly attracted to like yellows and oranges. Uh, yellow is the most common flower color. So that is, um, insects are, are attracted to yellows because there are more yellow colored flowers than any others. Here's another photo of the fritillary and it is on a zinnia and on another zinnia and butterflies, if you want to, if you want to plant a butterfly garden, one of the things you want to take into consideration is the flowers need to be big and flat because butterflies like a landing pad. And also, butterflies are cold-blooded. So in the mornings, whenever they wake up, especially cool mornings, they have to warm up. And they'll get on a landing pad, on a landing pad of a flower or on a rock that's getting warm and they'll warm up because they have to warm up or they can't fly. This is a variegated fritillary. There are lots of different fritillaries. And one of the most common small butterflies you will see is the sulfur. It's the little yellow butterflies you see flying around. And there are lots and lots of sulfurs here at the museum. They love our red salvia flowers. You'll also see a silver spotted skipper, which is a just a small kind of brown butterfly, uh, but it does have the white and the orange on its wings. And they love our apple mint when it blooms. And that's a photo there of a silver spotted skipper getting the nectar from the apple mint blossoms. This is a photo of our pollinator and herb gardens here at the Tipton County Museum. They were planted uh, to attract butterflies and other pollinators like uh, beetles and, and bees and birds. And you can look at those at any time that the museum grounds are open and you never know what you're gonna see when you go to the pollinator and herb garden, but you're always gonna see lots of bees and butterflies when you're there, especially in the summertime. There's another photo of it. We've got a nice stone walkway that you can walk through and you can stand there and watch the bees and the butterflies. Another photo and you can see in the background that's this tall, looks like a billboard. Well, this is our cedar signpost that was created by one of our Tipton County Master Gardeners. And we have certain certifications uh, that we have received from uh, different wildlife organizations that uh, say that we meet certain uh, requirements to be called a backyard wildlife habitat or a monarch way station. And we're very proud of those. Here's one of the more common flowers that you'll see in butterfly gardens, and that's the black-eyed Susan. They're very easy to grow, and they just, um, they're, they're a nice yellow flower, and they're a nice landing pad for the butterflies. Also, you'll see in this photo some more yellow flowers and some pink flowers. Those pink flowers are cone flowers. Cone flowers are another one of those plants that are a good landing pad. And the yellow flowers actually are um, black-eyed Susans, but these have a green eye, and they're called Irish eyes. Bee balm. We have a lot of bee balm out in our pollinator gardens, and bee balm uh, is uh, technically an herb because you can crush the leaves and, and you get this certain scent, but each one of those pink petals is a tube, and so this is very, very attractive to butterflies and to hummingbirds. Hummingbirds love bee balm. Also, goldenrod. You will see goldenrod on the sides of highways uh, and when it blooms it is usually covered up with butterflies and with bees. A lot of people consider it a weed and it can be weedy but um, you know if you see some growing on the side of a road or in the pasture you'll know that it's helping feed butterflies. Echinacea is just the, the scientific name for coneflowers and they're called purple coneflowers but they're really not purple they're more pinkish but um, still the, uh, you can, these are easy to find, they're very tough, um, they're very easy to grow, and the butterflies and the bees really, really like them. This is milkweed. I mentioned milkweed um, when we were talking about the monarch butterfly because that is what the caterpillar eats to become a butterfly. This is a close-up of our sign out in the, uh, in the back in the herb gardens. And you can see we have um, three different signs right there and they explain what organization they came from and, and what they mean and why 
they are there. And in closing, I'd like to encourage you to talk to your parents about the bees and the butterflies and the birds and get out into nature. Come here to the museum, walk the nature trail or go through the pollinator gardens and watch the butterflies. Maybe get a butterfly ID book and, and see if you can start IDing the butterflies. But in closing, uh, this, is, this is something I, I just really like because I love bees and butterflies. And it's in the name of the bee and of the butterfly and of the breeze, amen. So please come see us here at the Tipton County Museum. The grounds are open from 9 a.m. until dark. And enjoy the butterflies. Thank you.